I'm Valerie Kimlock. I am a professor in the College of Education here at Ohio State University. I'm actually a professor of literacy studies focusing on adolescent literacy development and the sociocultural practices of adolescents in urban contexts. <laughs> I was a faculty at Teachers College, Columbia University, inside of the English Education Program. While I was there, I also worked in New York City's Harlem community. And in that capacity, as a researcher and a visiting teacher at two high schools, I was really interested in exploring the literacy lives of urban adolescents, primarily 11th grade and 12th grade students who consider their writing practices to not be on grade level, and who were also more invested in the literacy practices within their surrounding communities and not the literacy practices within their high school classrooms or the literacy practices that were being taught to them by their teachers. And so um, I worked with um, countless students around this question of so what does it mean to be a literate citizen, particularly in the United States? And from that question we came up with this question of what does it mean to be a literate citizen inside of an urban community? And that particular urban community, being Harlem, uh, was undergoing so many changes associated with gentrification and the reappropriation of public space that we became more interested in looking at how literacy as a social construct, as a social practice, um, is everywhere at all times, and how young people engage in literacy practices and youth activism in order to mobilize other people to address the changes happening in the urban community. When I was a researcher inside of one of the high schools in Harlem, working with a new teacher, I became really attracted to the idea of how youth document the changes happening within their communities. And in talking about how they document the changes, I started having conversations with um, a junior level ELA classroom of students around writing practices, around how do we make sense of changes within our school context, but also within the out of school communities where they live, in ways that stimulate our writing and our imaginative thinking skills, in ways that you know, allowed us to begin to investigate the differences within an urban community in comparison to a suburban community or a rural community. And so that um, actually led to numerous conversations that I had with um, two students in particular. I'm Philip, who is currently a 20-year-old African-American male um, who has always lived in Harlem. Kalik, who is 19, he'll be 20 sometime later this year, African-American male student who lives on the outskirts of Harlem, but he considers himself a Harlemite. So Philip and Kalik were really interested in looking at how Harlem, as this historic African-American community, you know, it's this community that's, con that's considered to be a mecca of black culture and black practices of literacy, whether that's embodied through the literary works that came from the Harlem Renaissance, jazz music, um, just the various struggles of African-American people in the context of the United States, but localized in Harlem. Historically, why does gentrification happen in urban communities, although it's happening everywhere across the United States? Why Harlem in particular? And how do we talk about gentrification by talking about the sociocultural practices, the literacy practices, the community practices, and the practices around survival that so many, if not all, residents in Harlem have been engaging in and talking about and trying to figure out for themselves around issues of access and privilege in society. And so that's our project, essentially. So they became interested in looking at their community practices. And their community practices became connected to their desire to understand what this thing called gentrification is. What is gentrification? Why does it happen within an urban community like Harlem? And what are people actually doing to mobilize other people to take action either against gentrification or in question of what gentrification really does to the people who live in Harlem? who've been living there for over 20, 25 years. We document the changes happening in Harlem through uh, digital literacy. We take it to the streets. We take our cameras, our video cameras, we take our digital cameras, we take our audio equipment, and we go in the streets of Harlem. We walk the streets and we do video walkthroughs of the community. And an example of a video walkthrough in this particular context is Philip, for example, being really interested in knowing 
why this new pharmacy is is why this new pharmacy is opening up on his corner or on his block, and why the prices are so much more expensive than the local bodegas. And so Philip took about three or four of us on a video walkthrough of his community. And in this walkthrough, he has a digital camera. He's walking us through his neighborhood. He's taking snapshots. He's recording his images of community. He's actually documenting the work. He's documenting the signs of newness in comparison to the signs of oldness. And he's telling us a story. He's narrating his story of what Harlem is in the midst of the gentrification that is happening. Um, and Kalik would ask Philip questions about, so what is really going on? How do we talk about these changes? How do we talk about the things that are happening in this community by looking at what we are capturing on this videotape? By looking at the digital stories that young people can tell about their communities. And these are the stories that tend to not get told inside of our classrooms, inside of our schools, and as a matter of fact, inside of our communities writ large. I like the brownstones, but you know, you gotta be technical about it. Who's living in them? Brownstone is, is beautiful. Yeah. No lie. Nice trees and everything. But you I don't even think I ever seen black people come out of one of these brownstones. Ever. Oh, I said we should go over here, but I've never seen a brownstone where they have like a, a glass door right there. Oh wow, I didn't even notice that before. Mm-hmm. The funny thing is, gallery people look at us with the camera. Yeah, they do. People look at me and Khalid when we take pictures, and they just be like, they just look. They um, they just be like, what? They just look, like Lady Larry did looking across at us, like what they doing with this camera? Construction worker right here looking at us. They're like, what are they doing? Common sense should tell you what we doing. No lie, we taking pictures of old and new buildings. What do you think we talking about? I'm not even asking you to just look. I'm asking you to ask us what we're doing. That's the whole point of this project, for you to ask and for me to tell you. You know, excuse me, young man, why are you taking pictures? Are you a photographer? Nah, I'm not a photographer. Let me explain it to you. Some people I explain it to, some people just don't give a damn. So, one of the big questions is, I'm walking around with you and I've yet to really seen any new buildings or anything that would be considered a part of gentrification. That's one of them. All right. So what do you think that's gonna be? I think it's gonna be a corporate building. It looks like it's gonna have about, I think that's over 20 floors, don't you? 20, 25 floors. So do you think that's going to harm the community in terms of changing how the community looks or, yeah? Well, I know it's going to be like for, for high, you know, for people that's uh, like, um, like high class and when they, when they start bringing like revenues to the, to the block, then it's going to change everything. It's going to move some people out because more and more people are going to see this as a desirable place. And so... When people start seeing it as a desirable place, then you think that makes way for displacement? Yeah. So then where do you think the people are going to go who lived here forever? I don't know. Maybe Upper Harlem or Inwood or something like that, Bronx, I'm not sure. But I know, cause, um, cause I know that New York is, is going through a whole change. So. It's extremely significant that we have access to technology. It's, it's extremely significant that you know, the ways in which we are asking our questions, we are engaging in responses to those questions by being able to create a multimedia project, by being able to say that literacy is not just something that we gain by sitting in a classroom, but it's also something that we do by participating in our communities in ways where we digitally document the stories that are always and forever around us. These stories are not new stories.